Scott, the CEO of Cottony Attorneys and Consultants, and this is another industry update. It's all the legal, HR, and safety news you need to know in five minutes or less. So the first question that I've been getting the most is uh, this OSHA ETS, uh, do I still need to comply with it? And that's a difficult question to answer. Obviously, as a lawyer, I'm going to say you need to comply until, you know, probably the U.S. Supreme Court says you don't need to comply. Um, what's interesting, though, is that the Fifth Circuit, which is one step below the U.S. Supreme Court, has already issued a temporary stay. That case has been consolidated with about, you know, 30-plus other cases, and that's all in front of the Sixth Circuit now. Uh, but there's a lot of legal problems with the OSHA ETS. You know, there's a lot of issues there that I see. So what ultimately happens uh, in front of the U.S. Supreme Court, which is where this is ultimately going, uh, who knows, um, but what I would recommend is uh, I don't think it is likely for the December 5th or January 4th deadlines that I've talked about in previous industry updates. I don't think it's likely that a decision all the way through the Supreme Court will be made prior to those. It's possible on that January 4th deadline. Definitely don't see December 5th happening. Um, so that means that at a minimum you're going to get a reprieve. Um, I would recommend, though, that you start looking into how you can create policies and procedures and gathering some of the information, regardless of whether the OSHA ETS moves forward or not. What I mean by that is, you know, know who in your company has been vaccinated and who hasn't. You know, uh, know, um, you know, what type of documentation do you have to prove uh, vaccination? Uh, consider a voluntary vaccination program, regardless of what you think about it politically. It is useful because you may have customers that require it. And that's something that I want contractors to understand out there. Okay, this is not about politics. Ultimately, your customers are going to start requiring you to have vaccinated crews. So you want to consider, um, you know, at least having a portion of your workforce that uh, has that, um, you know, vaccination card. Um, the other thing that I would mention to you is with the Omicron variant out there, uh, it is possible that a renewed push uh, you know, happens for vaccinations. Um, you know, we don't know exactly where this is going. I don't understand 100% of the science, but I do know that this has become a, a routine where we end up, you know, going through Delta and now we're in a lull and then we've got, you know, the next variant on the horizon. So my suggestion would be, you know, prepare policies, prepare your documentation at a minimum. That's something that you can do to get ready regardless of what happens with the OSHA ETS. Um, I do think that there are significant legal concerns with it, but again, you know, until the Supreme Court says anything, uh, that's, that's going to be the ultimate decision maker. Next thing I want to talk to you about is the material volatility issue, supply chain problems. One of the things I want to make sure that all the contractors do is preserve your claims downstream. Now, I've said in the past I'm a big believer in flying information where, you know, contractors, manufacturers, distributors, they all are aligned in what they're seeking. But it's important that while you're trying to keep the customer happy, that you preserve any claims that you've got downstream. So one of the things I really recommend is sending a uh, letter off that basically reserves your rights and remedies uh, to whether it's you know distribution or manufacturers. And that way, at least you got it on the file, you can make that choice later in the event that you decide you want to uh, proceed against them. Uh, for an example of that, you can go to shopcotney.com. We've got a form there available. Um, you know, but the key thing is, is just making sure that you are uh, putting and giving them notice that you may have potential damages and that you may be seeking uh, recovery from that, um, from those damages from either distribution or manufacturing. Uh, again, I prefer to work together, but you know, you do need to at least preserve your claims. So uh, if any of you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out to tcotney at cottonycl.com. As always, I appreciate you guys and stay tuned uh, next couple of weeks for another industry update. Thanks.